dear learners welcome to the session in this session we will discuss about one of the most important circuit of computer called combinational circuits if you look into computers one of the key requirement is that it for example it adds two numbers how that addition takes place or how a subtraction if it is to be done how that particular thing takes place well it is with the help of these circuits called combinational circuit what do we mean by combinational circuit how do we create combinational circuit this is what we are going to discuss in this particular session combinational circuit circuits does not mean a combination what it means that you have a given set of inputs you have some circuit in between and you have certain outputs coming out of the circuit based on those internal processes or based on those internal circuitry which we place now what are the basic circuitry which is going to be there well in since you are dealing with computers they are either going to be and gates or gates or not gates right so this is what a combinational circuit will do it will take some input there will be then a circuit which will process the data and there will be an output and that circuit formation will be based on our logic so if we want to do addition the logic will be accordingly adjusted if you want to do subtraction logic will be accordingly adjusted so let us look some details about combinational circuit so before we go to the slide let us uh, have the slide show on right so combinational circuits are interconnected circuits of gates according to certain rules to provide produce an output depending on its input value this is precisely what i said a well formed combinational circuit should not have feedback loops now this is very very important for you to understand uh many a times i don't know whether you are familiar with uh, distillation processing or not you must be because you have a refinery in guwahati now within the distillation processing what happens whenever there are columns the bottommost column there is a purge right there is a purge the, the some kind of purge means when when you are distilling petroleum from the top you get not natural gases and from the bottom you get lube oil and those kinds of heavy products right but all the time we recycle some of this uh, the purge which we call we recycle it and why we do it so that in all the columns a minimum level of liquid is maintained if we don't do that then the built up is not going to take place because whatever is coming in is going to go out but with the help of this recycle or purge the built up is somewhat bigger rather than the input and output now that is a theory behind flip flop and the circuits which we call sequential circuits right so wherever there is a feedback the circuits are sequential circuits wherever there is no feedback the circuits are combinational circuits so a well formed combinational circuit should not have a feedback loop that is one of the reason can be represented as a network of gates obviously that's what we are talking about since we are talking about computer we are talking about and or not gates or a combinational a combination of functionally complete set of gates now what are these functionally complete set of gates you must read from your books or for the studies you will find this particular term well can be represented as a network of gates can be expressed by truth table or a boolean expression whenever you want to define a combinational circuit you need to design it with the help of a truth table right or a boolean expression and using those boolean expression you can do the drawing or whatever you want to do with the combinational circuits 
the output of the combinational circuit is related to its input by a combinational function which is independent of time therefore for an ideal combinational circuit the output should change instantaneously according to changes in input but in actual case there is slight delay the delay is normally proportional to the depth or number of levels that is maximum number of gates on any path from input to output now this is typical property of any flow circuit suppose you have a canal in brahmaputra right a canal coming out of brahmaput and there is a barrage obviously when you will open the gate from the barrage the water will take some time to reach a particular point down the line one one kilometer or two kilometer down the line so is the case with the combinational circuits the gates right there are number of gates available in between so it is going to take some time the circuit is going uh, the current is or the uh, logic uh, nature the current or the voltage is going to pass through these circuits and only then it will be reaching out of it therefore you will have to have a slight delay ideally no delay just like your switch as soon as you switch on electricity is on but then technically there is a mild delay which is not measurable by us the basic design issues relate to combinational circuits are so now what we are now so this is what combinational circuit is all about there is an input process and output right so what are the basic issues with this particular combinational circuit after all what we want to do obviously what we want to do we want to do the minimization of number of gates why we want to do minimization of number of gates lesser are the number of gates lesser is the delay as well as lesser is the circuit requirement right if you are talking about uh, circuit design then the more number of gates will form a bigger circuit isn't it and more expensive circuit too right so this is what is required and the depth of the circuit should not exceed a specific level otherwise the gated delay will be too much and probably computer is not going to accept that kind of a situation number of input lines to a gate which is called fan in and to how many gates its output can be fed which is called fan out are constrained by the circuit power constraints so this is another constraint which exists in any combinational circuit and which has to exist in com any combinational circuit right for example you are using let's say you you are using electricity at home right suppose you installed an air conditioner in your house and you want to you have a power power uh, consumption limit of let's say 3 watts or 3 uh, kilowatts or so then if you install another it wo it won't be possible so people who deal with this kind of a situation no or maybe inverters you might be dealing with at at house so inverter the limit is let's say 625 kva then hardly three lights or four fans can work with it right you try to put another it will be off that is what fan in and fan out as far as combinational circuit is all about right now how do we represent the canonical or the standard form as far as logical expressions are concerned and how are they related to com uh, the canal uh, this uh, combinational circuit let's have a look at it the first form is called sum of product form of standard representation of boolean algebraic expression this is also called sop short for sop for example is a a, a <coughs> and b dash that is negation of b plus that is or a and b so this represents a sum of product form a term of sum of product expression that contains every variable of that function either in the true or complement form is called a min term so this is the definition which most of the time you encounter the min term and for example what we have given a that a and b and c plus a and b 
then only ABC is min term. Why? Because A, B and C are appearing either in the normal form which is ABC or in the complement form. They can also appear as A dash, B dash, C dash, any one of them in any kind of format. So uh, probably A can be A dash and B, C that will be an acceptable term. Similarly, A, B dash, C dash will be an acceptable min term. But A dot B, A and B which is, is not a min term because it does not contain C. Right? So the de this is the definition for min term and this has its connotation with Carnot's map in the sense that <clears throat> in Carnot's map you represent a truth table and that is actually represented by a min term. The term A, dosh, A, dot B, uh, A and B and C will be only one, one only if A equals 1, B equals 1 and C equals 1. This is the only possibility when this particular min term will be having a value 1. Otherwise, it won't be having a value 1. <coughs> okay. And that's why we will be representing 1 in the Carnot's map against them. For any other combination of the values of ABC, the min term A and B and C will have a value 0. This is simple logic, right? A and B has to be 1 only if A equals to 1 and B equals to 1. Otherwise, it will have a false value, which is untrue. The opposite of it is called product of some form, which basically represents plus within the bracket and and plus happens to be or and and as the conjunction of the two. Max term is the term of POS, that is product of some expression, which contains all the variables of the function in true or complemented form. For example, in f equals to a, b, c equals a plus b plus c. So a or b or c and a plus b dash. Max term is only a, b, a plus b plus c. Now, the, advantage, the basic feature of max term is that a plus b plus c will have zero value only for one particular case. For all other cases, it will have one value. Okay. And what is that case? A equals 0, B equals 0, and C equals 0. For all other combinations of values of A, B, C, it will have a value 1. This is the significance of max term. M many a time solving problems for combinational circuits using Carnot's map, you will use this particular term in a different connotation where you will be drawing a different kind of a Carnot's map. For the time being, we will not be using the max term, we will be using the min term based Carnot's map. So once we are familiar with the basic combinational circuit issues, let us move on to one of the core important issue for the design of combinational circuits and that is minimization of gates. What we want to do is that we want to minimize the circuit or the number of gates utilized in a particular circuit. To do so, what we can do is either algebraic simplification, which somewhat, I mean, there are Boolean functions and all that, which are somewhat difficult. There are Carnot's map, which we are going to discuss. And there is a quinn mckluskey method, which is beyond the scope of this particular uh, course itself. Let's discuss about the Carnot's map to demonstrate how this algebra, the process of minimization of the gates can be carried out. But let me warn you here, then when you are going to industry for this particular thing, people are not using these methods anymore. These are for your own intellectual development. Now these things has been taken over by programming languages, okay, and many, many, many more different concepts. But to begin with, you must always know this particular concept so that you can move on to the greater concept. So let us discuss it with the help of a problem, an example. Let's look into the problem. Assume that you are asked to design a circuit 
that accepts three bits as input and generates an output zero if the input bit represents a non-prime number, else produces an output one, right? Now, this is the given problem, that we have three bit input and one will be generated as an output if the given combination of or equivalent digital number is prime. Now, what are those different prime numbers? We have two, right? Okay, prime numbers. So we have two, we have three, then we have uh, five, and then we have seven. So we have four prime numbers. So what we need to do, the very first thing which we need to do, represent the given problem in the form of a truth table. We got to do that. Why? Because our logic should get reflected into the truth table. Remember, truth table is what? Truth table is a form of min term. All right. So let's look into the decimal equivalent. Decimal zero, we have all three zero. Output should be zero because that's not a prime number. One, right? One is represented as zero, zero, one. One is also not a prime number. Remember that. Two is a prime. So output you can see is one. Three is also a prime. Four is not a prime. Five is a prime. Six is not a prime. And seven is a prime. So we are able to represent the whole logic of the problem into the form of a truth, truth table. Now what? Well, now we have six, in fact, five more steps to do. And I would like to draw, in fact, demonstrate each one of those. But let me first read those steps for you. And then I would like to demonstrate each one of them for you. The first one is draw a Karnaus map. So how do we draw that? Step three is map the truth table onto the Karnaus map. So we would like to do the uh, mapping of truth table into the Karnaus map. Then identify and mark the adjacent terms. So this is till this point we will have be using with min term. But from this point onwards, we will convert min term. We will try to combine min terms for optimization of get. So we will try to find adjacent. I'll talk about what is adjacent a little bit when I'm discussing. Then find the minimal expression. That is what we are going to do. And finally, draw the resultant logic diagram. So this is exactly what we are going to do uh, with the help of, let's say this time with the help of a pen and paper. So as step two, what we are going to do, we have drawn a K-map. This particular K-map, if as you can see have eight boxes each of this box is represented for one min term what we are going to do we are going to represent a on this side and bc on this side of this particular k map when we are representing a what are the possible values of a zero or one so this is what we have represented what are the possible values of BC? BC can be 0, 0 or the next can be 0, 1. Now, the third in this particular series should be 1, 0. But in Karnaus map, there is a typical condition that the next bit or next uh, sequence, whatever we represent, should change only in one bit. And the one bit which is going to change in this particular case is moving this particular 0 to 1. So it is going to be 1, 1. And the last in this particular case will be 1, 0. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Why we are representing like that? Because in each of these, there is only change in one bit only. That you can notice. Here the changes between C, right? Here the changes once again between C. And what is in this particular case? What is changing? Uh, B is changing over here, 0 to 1, and B is not changing over here. So you can see the, the way the changes are being made into the Karnaus map. So this is the Karnaus map. As we said, we have drawn the Karnaus map as step 2. Now from this step, let's move on to step 3, that is the truth table. Now the truth table, 0, 0, 0, we, we won't draw 0, 0, 0 any case. We will be drawing only for 
where the value is 1 and the first case in that particular case is for the case of 2 right and that case of 2 is 0 1 0 so this is a is 0 b is 1 right b is 1 a is 0 b is 1 and c is 0 which is happens to be 2 so this is where the 1 appears this is a min term right when the value of a is 0 the value of b is 1 and the value of c is 0 which happens to be 2 the value is 1 the next case is 3 which is 0 1 1 so 1 appears here what is the next case next case is we have 5 5 is 1 0 1 5 is so this is 5 then 6 is not prime 7 which is 1 1 1 so 7 is the last case so now what we have done we have converted the min terms into the Carnaus map we have translated the min terms into the Carnaus map now from here onwards we move on to step 4 and what was the step 4 step 4 was to find the adjacent cell let's try to find the adjacent cell now what are adjacent cell remember what we said they change only in one bit so these two are the adjacent cell right okay and these two are the adjacent cells we are slightly unlucky because in case of this one had we had this one over here then these four cells would have made an adjacent cell pair if four cell make an adjacent pair cell pair then you will find two variables will be eliminated when only two cells are making adjacent cell pair then only one of the cell will be or one of the variable will be eliminated what is changing let's let's identify how it is what is the value of a for this particular row the value of a is 0 right so a prime is 1 right and b in this particular case is 1 in both the cases so b equals to 1 and c 1 or 0 it does not matter so what is the expression for this particular case a dash and b the value of c does not matter because the value of c is either 0 or 1 for both the cases it has to be 1 therefore a dash dot b is going to be the optimized expression for this similarly for this particular case please note what is the value of a in this particular case a is 1 so we know we don't have to create a dash the value of b is changing from 0 to 1 in this particular case isn't it so b gets eliminated and the value of c is 1 therefore the b changes right so b is not needed similarly in this particular case c is not needed and the expression becomes ac so the overall expression becomes a dash b plus a c so this term plus this term so this is my actually the step number five this is the optimized expression which I get right now I want to draw the equivalent equivalent uh, diagram circuit diagram for it all right so let me draw the equivalent circuit diagram now what we have an input a here right so a can be negated so the a becomes a dash a can be straight this is a now if we once again so a dash and a with a dash we have b so we draw a b here okay and there is an end gate it goes through the end gate all right what is the equivalent expression a dash b in this particular case we have a and we have another input c so both of them goes to an AND gate and what is the output of this AND gate AC and these two in outputs then go through a OR gate because our expression was plus in between so plus is an OR gate so what we get is A dash B plus AC so that is our output now what you basically have you have three inputs A B C and what you will be producing you will be producing any of the output let's try to test this particular thing for example if a is equal to 1 b is equal to 1 c is equal to 1 what is 
the to total these are seven so it should show us an output one let's try it a and c brings us a dash b becomes zero and a c becomes one so a dash b plus a c equals to zero plus one equals to one so output is one so that's correct for the case let's try another when we have a equals to zero b is equal to let's say zero and c equals to one which is the case of when we are talking about one we are expecting a false result so a is zero therefore a dash is one right so a dash is one b in this case is zero so one and zero becomes zero in the a is zero so a c becomes zero right so both the terms are zeros therefore output is equals to zero so what you get for the case when input is one you get a zero means it is not a prime this is prime so you can try for any any combination what you have done instead of four gates in fact four there were four places where one was appearing you could have done three three gates for this uh, in fact one gate for this one for this one for this and one for this you could have four gates and then all of them should have been odd together to make it five we have reduced the number of gates to one two and three overall so this is the way we have done the minimization of gate what next from where here where will we move on you should practice this kind of a thing you should try draw, drawing k maps for four uh, four uh, variables a b c d and likewise remember one thing whenever there is a problem the first thing you must do is to draw the truth table if you are able to draw the truth table for Karnaus map, half of the battle is won. So concentrate on drawing the truth table. Thereafter, it is plain mathematics, right? But before drawing the truth table, you've got to understand the logic, what you want as an output. Remember, con uh, this combinational circuits are designed on the basis of given problem. So you define the problem domain, right? Once you have defined the problem domain, input gets fixed and the output gets fixed. That's what is your truth table. If you know your input, you know your output, draw the truth table in the form of min terms for, and then simplify. Unfortunately, Karnaus map are not useful when the number of variables move, go up. Um, I mean, go beyond six, then we are not using these Karnaus map. But this is a very good logical start to know about your computer and its logic circuit. So you must uh, try solving such problems and discuss it with your counselors from time to time. For the time being, thank you for being with me.